Hi folks, my name is Joko. I'm a IELTS instructor and uh, administrator at a company called, a school called Edulink. Um, and I, I like to come online and do these free uh, uh, feedback sessions for people who post their uh, essays at the IELTS Tips and Tricks page on Facebook. Uh, it's the leading, the, the prevalent group uh, in uh, the sphere there at Facebook, and uh, I'm privileged to have been a member of it for some time. And uh, I, I always enjoy doing this because the because the, the feedback that I get as a, as a teacher is to see improvement in your writing. That's always something that makes me feel like I'm doing something for the universe. And here at this time of uh, trouble, who can use more of that? All right, one minute introduction there. Let's go straight into our essay tonight, which comes from us comes to us from uh, a young lady. I don't know how old she is, but someone named Mukti Mukti uh, has written a um, essay on this topic question. Now, the first thing you need to do in any IELTS task two is to thoroughly analyze the question and do not underestimate its complexity. Okay, don't think, oh, well, that's a simple statement or that's such and such. Like in this one here. Yeah. Okay. What's our question? Mer. I like to voice read it. Multinational companies are becoming increasingly common in developing countries. What are the advantages and disadvantages of this? Okay, it's an advantages and disadvantages essay. Now, this is increasingly rare. Uh, ever since IELTS 6, you have not seen a what are the advantages and disadvantages. That's it, right? Um, Usually, well, I mean, in, in the academic essay, you won't see this kind of question anymore. It is nowadays, uh, do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? Now, there's some aspects to this essay, which you'll still find, or this question, which you will still find in general training uh, um, uh, tests that can be applied towards the academic testing, namely the requirement of stating not only what the advantages are, but why are they advantages? In this type of question, this is what I think separates a lot of sixes from sevens. Because if you don't explain why something is an advantage, you have not supported your answer. You've just said it. A uh, very common problem amongst many other problems that we find in this particular type. I mean, in, in task two in general, but that's specific to this type. Okay, what, what I was saying before, was, what are the complexities here? Seems pretty straightforward, right? Multinational companies are becoming increasingly common. What are the advantages and disadvantages to who? Is it for the companies or for the developing nations? What are they talking about? It's not specific. So within the context of your essay, you should define what you're talking about, okay? And... That's very important. And don't, if it's ambiguous like this, don't wander between them. Mm. How many advantages or disadvantages should you write? No more than three. One, most instructors will not recommend one because, well, not in this type where it's, you're asked to mention both. If it's a, do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? Well, then yes, you can name one and that's fine. Because it can outweigh it all by outweigh all the other ones just by itself. Make sure you pick that type. Okay, what has he got to say? Now my um my my marking is on a color code. I don't bother putting it up anymore. Orange. Orange is task response. Does it address the question? Has the author addressed all parts of the question? Mer. Mer. In the era of globalization, there is an increasing prevalence of multinational companies mainly in the countries that are on the way of development. This essay intends to illustrate the positives aspects of it, to. namely the surge in job opportunities and improved transport system in rural areas and also the negative sides, such as chances of labor exploitation and suffering of local industries. I recommend that you listen to your um, essays like this. Did you hear... How that second sentence, uh, the this essay intends to, 
Did you hear how long that was? I mean, uh, how many? It, it, it just seemed to go on and on and on. And you can really hear that sometimes when you can't see it. That sentence is 39 words long. A bit, bit chunky for a sentence. Let's keep them under 25. All right, well, there's no limit. I'm just throwing a number out there. Okay. And, uh, an increasing prevalence. Now, I know you're trying to restate the question through, um, through uh, uh, paraphrasing. However, prevalence is, a, um, is, is not gradable. Okay? Prevalence means it's the most common thing you run into of that type. And so you can't have an increasing prevalence. Not the way I understand the word. It's either prevalent or it's not. If it's one of many and not the most common, well, then it's not prevalent. Spreading or is increasing. Well, no. Again, as I said, it's prevalent or it isn't. Increasing prevalence, it can become prevalent in more areas. But um, it's not a gradable adjective. Oh, it's very prevalent. No, it's prevalent or it isn't. Mainly in the countries. How about countries? Countries that are on the way of development. Sorry, I know that's yellow. That is um, for lexical. And I don't, uh, that, it's, not, it's not a common, you don't hear that as a collocation. Okay? Developing nations is fine. You can, you can repeat a few words in the questions. Or, you know, um, third world. It's not very uh, politically correct these days. But countries that are on the way to development. No, not a collocation that you should use. This essay intends to. Well, does it intend to or will it? I suggest will, not intends to, if you're going to have this type of statement at all. Now, as I said, this sentence is way too long. The longer you explain your positions in the introduction, the more you will be repeating yourself in the body paragraphs. So you must state, if you want to state your main advantages and disadvantages, do so very briefly as a summary, not the positive aspects of it. Namely, no, um, uh, serve job opportunities and improve transport systems in rural areas. S uh, transport system in rural areas. In the, the rural transport system. Oh, and, and also the, the negative sides, such as chance, such as the chance, the chance of labor or exploitation, labor exploitation, and the suffering of global in, local industries. How about, you know, when you have two elements like that, there's something called parallelism, where they should be a similar type of uh, construction. Right? As chances of labor exploitation. Okay, you've got a, a plural noun with, um, ex with of. Okay? And suffering, well, that's a gerund, and uh, acts like a noun, of local industries the suffering of local industries er. yeah it's the suffering in there that bothers me okay and then no no connection between the in, um, between the uh, introduction and the and the um, body paragraph number one okay. I know this you know, I would recommend that you, to maintain a sort of a natural type of cohesion, is end your paragraph with the same topic you're going to be beginning your first sentence of the next paragraph, okay? Uh, so in this case, you want to talk about the negatives first, because you ended with the negatives in the opening paragraph. Although it's tough to do when you get two like this. There are several benefits of international companies. 
Now you sound like you're talking about you know the business, uh, you know business magazine. Oh, there are several benefits of international companies. You know what? Two benefits of no. You, you see, benefits of you need a an, an abstract noun here. There are many benefits of working out every day. There are many benefits to. It's more common. Many benefits to international companies doing what? Just in general, what are they doing? And the foremost one. Okay, if you want to argue that, go ahead. Uh, foremost one is creating new job opportunities for the underprivileged people in the third world countries. God, that goes on a ways. Now, why do you have the and in there? There are several benefits to international companies. And the foremost one is creating new job opportunities for underprivileged people in the third world countries. Break that up into two. This, in turn, helps demolish. No, no, you don't want to use demolish uh, with... It helps to demolish the number of people under the poverty line. We don't use demolish in place of verbs that we use to talk about abstract things like poverty. <laughs> and it reads like, you know, and because it's such a negative verb, demolish means to, to tear down. To demolish the people living under the poverty line? God, haven't they had it hard enough already? You've got to demolish them? Under the poverty line comma, which eventually leads to the way of reducing poverty of that country. Okay, so if you um, demolish, demolish, so demolish here you mean, you mean decrease. If you decrease the number of poor people, Poverty will become better. That's basically what you're saying there. Leads to the way of reducing poverty of that country. What country? You haven't mentioned a country. Okay, um, here, Bangladesh can be taken as an example because it showed sustainable progress in economy, in economy, in its economy, or in the in their economy, that would be better. After the entrance of multiple multinational, oh excuse me, m entrance of multiple international industries, Ooh, that's hard to say. How does the sustainable progress? There can be there can be a lot of progress in a country economically, and only have it benefit a very small number of people. Uh, I'm sure that's common throughout South Asia. And here in Myanmar, I know that's what happens. So when multinational companies come into an area that does not help people in poverty directly, okay, you have to say that you know you need to connect the advantage that you're stating to something positive. The you know the Webster's dictionary defines, or is it Oxford, whatever? You look up in the dictionary and you look up advantage. And it means something that a person has that they didn't have before or that other people don't have that puts them in a better place comparatively. Uh, I don't see that just in the statement that m multiple international industries uh, in a short time. Okay, then what happened? Okay, hi folks, I'm back. Um, day two. Uh, ran out of steam last night. Now it's, uh, it's fresh and early and I'm ready to look at Mukti's um, essay again. Where did we leave off? We left off with the idea that you have to indicate not just that the economy improved, coincided, it's at the same time or soon after several multinational corporations entered the country and then the economy improved. Well, that's, that is not causality. That's not a, a statement you say that, well, what happened? Well, the multinational companies started putting their multinational dollars into 
uh, the uh, money flow, okay, which did what? It gave people jobs. It um, it increased exports. It what did it do? Okay, you can't just say it happened and then the economy improved. That's not a. It's not. St it's not strong support. It is support. So you can say that your point is supported, but it's not well supported. That's the difference between a six and a seven. Okay, um, as your example. Another upside, okay. another improvement, another upside is the improvement of the total transport system. And then you got a space, and then you put the comma. Now, I know that people think, oh, punctuation doesn't matter, but it does. I mean, that's like the same as a misspelling, uh, especially in the rural area. Now, um, how many rural areas does Bangladesh have? I would suspect more than one. Okay, So you would want in rural areas, plural, and since we're talking in general, you would not use the. Okay, since these companies, now it's been more than a sentence since you've mentioned the com companies, since multinational companies are mainly located, okay, are mainly located, well, they located themselves in the past. Okay, so um, as these companies located themselves or, um, you know, or, well, I guess you could say are located, uh, far from the urban areas, comma, again, with the space before it, they contribute to making the basic infrastructures ooh, across the remote side of the country. How? What do they do? First of all, infrastructure is a category, and like all categories, you know, like furniture, and luggage, and equipment, and information, these nouns that are categories are uncountable. You cannot have an infrastructure. It's not, no, it's a piece of infrastructure. It's a general noun, so it's uncountable. Across the remote side of the country. That's not using the word remote correctly there. This, on a whole, on the whole, is the expression. Impacts the whole traffic, whole, whole traffic system of that country. Which one? In a positive way. How? What is the advantage? You're just simply saying that it impacts it positively. And why is that an advantage? You have to say what the advantages are. You don't have to explain how they came about, really. But you do need to explain what the thing that you're talking about is advantageous. And okay, why is it a good thing? I know. Traffic is better. That's a good thing. Explain it. Explain everything. Turning to the downside of these companies. There is a great chance of labor exploitation. There is a great chance. Uh, no. I think... Ah, uh, I think my food has arrived. Mmm, dinner. Okay. Got some salad. Mm. Some french fries. And a burger. If you don't mind if I eat while well, I give you feedback. Great means large, as you know. Big chance indicates a not a likelihood, a, a um, an unlikelihood. So a great chance of is kind of contradictory. It's a big small thing, a big small thing. Okay, once again, faulty punctuation. Most of the international employers. Really? Most of them? Where is that in the question? Want to invest. Now, that's not what we're talking about. Investment and going into are different things. Lots of companies invest and never step foot inside a foreign country.
Okay. So not invest. Um, due to its countries, its countries plural, its singular. Low wage labors. Now, labor is an uncountable noun. It's a thing. It says you can't have a labor. For this reason, faulty punctuation, it, it is frequently seen. Okay, why use the passive voice? Now, passive is um, when the person doing it isn't as important as what is happening. But I don't think that's the case here. We're talking about the multinational corporations. They're the actors who are doing the underpaying. And so it doesn't make any sense to put it in passive voice. Passive is, don't use passive to impress people. Use it for very specific reasons. Avoiding responsibility. Definitely not the case here. You're trying to say it's the multinational companies that are doing this. When you don't know who did something. Or you want to distance your idea, your thoughts from them. Say by saying like, oh, well, it is thought by some. No. Here you directly want to say that they're responsible. So you should use active voice. And it's frequently seen that workers are underpaid and also get deprived. Okay, now once again, the use of get is a form of the passive voice. Okay, they are deprived. Okay, now here. Um, but don't ever use get. It's very informal. The basic life amenities, like toilets, food, water. Okay. Now, again, it's very important to identify advantages or disadvantages for whom. The uh, in the instance here, we've got the low the low paid labor is an advantage, not a disadvantage, from the point of view of the company. Okay. Now, don't use collocations or words that you're not 100% sure are accurate, like this small funded industries. Have you read that someplace? Small funded? That's not a collocation. It's not a word, small funded. It's just small industries. That's all you need to say. Small industries. And remember, an industry is not a company. It's all of the companies. In, uh, so, uh, in a particular uh, field of, or a particular endeavor, particular thing that they do. So, small industries suffer hmm, due to the invasion. Invasion is not the right word. Presence, entry. Of the international ones. We use one or ones as a um, pronoun to indicate uh, that it's like the rest of the things you've been talking about. Here, the international companies are not like the rest of the things. Since the local companies cannot withstand, hmm, stand not the right word there, cannot Compete. Compete. Withstand the new competitions. Again, uh, incountable. They often, they often tend to. Mm, blue. It can to become bankrupt. Okay, well, we don't become bankrupt. We go bankrupt. Go bankrupt. 
Examples of small cottage industries. Now, there's a nice little bit of vocabulary. Uh, can be mentioned here that almost have fallen into oblivion since the garment sectors are already producing high standard clothes at a much cheaper rate. Oh, boy. That sentence started off so good. Can be mentioned here. Again, once again, you're using passive be mentioned. Okay. Um, get deprived. When it doesn't need to be there. We don't want passive there at all. Now, why almost have fallen into oblivion? Don't use an expression like fallen into oblivion. We don't, it's not, it's not the kind of situation where falling into oblivion is, has any place stylistically or content wise. Oblivion means, um, not existing and even having your memory wiped off, wiped away. Oblivion. Now, it's not only not existing, but it's like there's no record of your existence. And then why bring in garments all of a sudden? Okay. And really, the way that this ends, ooh, it's, it's really... Okay, they fall into oblivion. They disappear because the garments sectors, why plural, are already providing high standard clothes at a much cheaper rate. Why already? So the small companies lose out because the larger companies are producing a better product at a lower price. Sounds like that's an advantageous thing for the country. Certainly an advantage for the consumer. Not an advantage for the small industries, but you never say for these people. In conclusion, while there are multiple benefits of the, of the multinational of multinational companies, don't need those. Okay, and same things that there are benefits that positively affect the economy. Well, a, bo a benefit means something that positively affects something. So you're being redundant. You're repeating yourself. The setbacks should also be taken into consideration and tried to be solved meticulously. Ooh, bad way to end. Here's why. Does the essay ask you to solve the problem, solve the disadvantages? No. It doesn't ask you to say one side or the other. No. And so you kind of end with this, we need to solve these disadvantages? No. I mean, you can certainly say that they exist, and you should. You have to. The setbacks, and they're not setbacks, they're disadvantages, should be taken into consideration. Period. Stop. Finish. Okay, um, Mukti, I say, uh, I noticed that you were uh, making co positive comments on um, Shakira's uh, piece. No, not Shakira. Janir, Janine, um, Jamila. Uh, and you have a lot of the same problems. Okay. You use words like invest, get deprived, small funded industries, invasion, that you think are high-level vocabulary. What they're doing is they're reducing your lexical score because they're not being used correctly. Uh, range, range means the variety of words. And you know what? That includes simple words as well. 
It includes words that are everyday words. And so you're writing a confusing piece because of the words that you're choosing. Use simpler, more everyday words. And that will improve your task response. It will improve your coherence and cohesion. And um, it will improve your lexical because all of these lexical errors uh, don't improve your score and they hurt in it more than just one way. Okay, that's all I have. Up tomorrow.